Hello, and welcome back to the International Journal of Medical Students webinar series, Research Pathways. My name is Dr. Leah Comer, and I am the host of this series, which features presentations from various associate editors at the IJMS, highlighting their research um, experiences, navigating the world of academia, their challenges and triumphs, and advice for future clinician scientists. I am pleased to introduce to you our featured speaker for this episode, Vincent Kip Courier. Uh, Vincent is a senior medical student at the University of Nairobi in Kenya um, and has been serving as a graduate teaching and research assistant at the Department of Human Anatomy and Physiology at the same institution. His research interests include cardiac biology, anatomical and peer reviewed sciences. He is a mentor for undergraduate students, uh, conducts workshops and programs affiliated with the Federation of African Medical Students Associations. He is here with us today to share with us some insights into his ever-growing research career. Thank you for joining us, Vincent, and welcome. Thank you so much, Leah, and um, uh, quite an introduction there. I'm really grateful to, to be here today uh, with all of you, and I'm um, just glad to share a bit um, regarding my research uh, pathway. And um, we, we'll talk briefly just about um, where I've come from, where I am, and uh, what the future holds um, right ahead. Yeah. So um, as mentioned earlier by Leah, my name is uh, Vincent Kipkorir. I'm currently in my fifth year of medical school at the University of Nairobi. I'm having completed my Bachelor of Science uh, degree in human anatomy. Um, and, and I presently serve as an associate editor for the International Journal of Medical Students, uh, which is uh, why we are here today. And so I'm really uh, quite um, excited to, to share uh, my journey with, with all of us today. And my hope is that we can be able to uh, maybe grab a few things here and there and, and hopefully further the research agenda even as we move forward. So just a brief outline on what uh, am I going to share today. Um, the first thing is that I'll share my journey, uh, my research uh, pathway and um, highlighting my successes um, and, and maybe the people who stood behind me and, and, the, and the organizations and how it's been really and the challenges that I've also encountered across the way. And um, speaking about challenges, we'll ask ourselves then, is it really worth it to pursue um, research considering all the um, um, hurdles that you may come across? And um, I'll share a bit about what I believe the future holds in terms of research, especially in the undergraduate medical student context and also a parting shot, um, uh, and to that end, we'll bring it to a close. So to start us off, um, what's my journey like um, in terms of research? Um, thinking about it, I divide it into three phases. Um, the first phase is where I was introduced into research. Uh, I'd, I'd call it maybe the prodromo or the foundational phase. And the next phase was um, where I furthered into research and even much more into editorial work. So to start us off is that um, I joined medical school in the University of Nairobi uh, for my first year uh, in the academic year 2016-2017. And um, when I joined medical school, I of course met uh, a, a, a group of quite uh, bright individuals. And um, it's through that that I got to have some sense of exposure and, and, and um, looking at those who'd gone ahead and engaged in research even from an undergraduate perspective, um, was quite inspirational for me, just getting to see not just research in the essence of having a publications output, but even much more importantly about how research transformed their mindset. You could clearly see that there was a, quite a distinction between the students who engaged in research and those who did not engage in research. And, and for me, that is what drew me closer and made me want to actually um, learn how to conduct research, of course, for the benefit of medicine, but even so uh, to enhance my capacity to critically think and um, uh, also enhance my contribution to, to the field of medicine. So that was during my first year. It's where my interest, I'd say, was born in terms of um, my desire to pursue research and conduct research. Um, in the University of Nairobi, we usually have a program for undergraduate medical students whereby when you finish your first year of medical school, and um, you performed um, exceedingly well in anatomy, you are invited to uh, uh, participate in the Department of Human Anatomy as a demonstrator, which is equivalent to a lab instructor. And so the role really here is that um, every time where students are dissecting, you'd go in and, and try and illustrate for them the aspects that they may be struggling with. 
and just to ensure that they're able to see all the structures that the manual um, requires them to see. And so in 2018, uh, during my second year of medical school, I joined the Department of Human Anatomy at the University of Nairobi as a demonstrator. And um, the beauty of this step was that um, as the group of demonstrators, we were about five, uh, we were uh, commissioned to um, uh, participate in, in, in research. And, and, and this was organized in such a way that we came up with, we were of course being guided, uh, came up with a concept um, was, were able to um, collect data from uh, cadaveric specimen, uh, drafted a manuscript, and thereafter published in the Anatomy Journal of Africa. And so for me, those two years were very foundational. My first year, where I picked my interest, my second year, where I joined the department as a demonstrator. And this was much more sedimented when I then moved on to my third year of medical school, where again, um, the University of Nairobi has an intercalated program for Bachelor of Science in Human Anatomy. And so I was invited by the department to uh, participate in the program uh, during the academic year 2018-2019. And so um, during my uh, BSc Anatomy year, I was able to um, learn more about the intricacies of research and also um, being a requirement to undertake um, two research projects, one long project and one short project. Uh, my long project was an, an um, was a study where I was assessing the uh, this age and sex related changes in the structure of the cavotricuspid isthmus in a select Kenyan population. And so through that, I was able to learn now the intricacies of what goes in into research. So this first phase, which I described as very foundational, were within my first, second, and third years within medical school. Um, after I graduated from my Bachelor of Science in Human Anatomy um, in the year 2019, I then moved on to um, have further engagement in research. And this was um, especially during the COVID-19 period, uh, where we had the lockdown period in 2020, um, we were able to form a research in COVID-19 Times Consortium. And uh, uh, this was ideally um, centered around um, coming up with systematic reviews and meta-analysis that try to enhance the understanding of this uh, at, the, at, the, at the time poorly known um, disease in terms of the disease patterns, the natural history, and even the outcomes and, and, and management, so to say. So through this consortium, we're able to publish about um, eight systematic reviews and meta-analyses that touched on key aspects of the COVID-19. And, and this, again, really spearheaded me into um, a huge understanding on, on how to conduct systematic reviews and meta-analyses. And thereafter, I then engaged in several collaborative um, research projects within the year 2020-2021. Now, what I've described is where my research um, background was heavily built up. And secondly, where I was able to grow in terms of conducting research as, a res as an independent researcher and also in collaborative settings. Um, in early 2021, I was able to join um, the Annals of African Surgery as an editorial intern. My internship period extended between February 2021 to February 2022. And that's where my foundation for editorial work um, started. And so as an intern, we're able to learn the workings of a journal and, and the process that happens from submission of an article all the way to the publication of the same article. And this later on proved quite instrumental where um, in, towards the end of 2021, I applied to um, uh, partake in, in uh, contributing towards furthering undergraduate medical research uh, by joining the International Journal of Medical Students as an associate editor. Um, and, and thereafter, um, I've been able to even much more grow in terms of editorial work, uh, thanks to IJMS for that. And, and currently, I do serve as the managing editor for the Anatomy Journal of Africa. Um, and also, I serve uh, in the reviewer board member for the International Journal of Clinical Investigations and Case Report. Now, I know that was quite a handful, but that's the journey in, in, in its essence. And so moving forward, I'm just going to describe a few aspects about where am I currently, what challenges have I faced, and, 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 so, and so what. So thus far, I've been able to have um, 
about 20 publications with an average of about um, 3,000 reads on ResearchGate and um, uh, citations about 400 with an H index and an I10 index of six. And that's, that's regarding my research output so far since uh, my commencement back in 2018, uh, where I commenced my BSc till um, uh, present as we speak today. And so uh, for me, um, I'd say the successes I've had so far um, in terms of learning and also having some sense of research output has um, not been um, an individual uh, success, I'd say. Um, there have been scores of individuals and, and organizations and departments that have really um, worked tirelessly, tirelessly towards ensuring that uh, uh, my success in research is certain. And so uh, from the very left of uh, our screen, uh, that's my family on the day I graduated from my BSc of anatomy in uh, 2019. And I think for me, my greatest support system, which I'm really, really grateful to God for, is for my family um, in terms of uh, just uh, encouraging me in those moments whereby I have um, uh, certain challenges um, and also just supporting me in terms of getting to enhance my understanding and my knowledge in research. Now, uh, to the right of the image of my family is the logo for the university I study in, the University of Nairobi, which has um, given quite a lot in terms of um, empowering me academically and also uh, uh, giving me opportunities to get to perform and conduct research. And then, as I mentioned earlier, another giant that I think for me uh, holds um, or hits home is the Annals of African Surgery, where I had my first editorial internship and have thereafter been engaged in, in several um, editorial uh, spaces. And of course, uh, huge, huge credits goes to the International General Medical Students, which has been, it's now my home really, yeah. And it's where I get to um, just see the impact that we are having translate towards um, uh, an increase in the quality and quantity of research output among medical students. And so for me, I'd say um, in my, across the journey that I've briefly shared, and, and, and the successes that I've had so far, these are the four factions that um, I'd credit my success towards and, and without which I wouldn't have come this far. So uh, a huge, huge, huge uh, uh, share of appreciation to them. And so you might want to ask, um, so how has it been? My research journey, has it been that straightforward? Has it been as easy or as, um, as um, uneventful as I've just, just described it right now? And I'd say the answer is no, it has not been a walk in the park. I mean, at times it's actually, I've been lost in the park really. And, and, and this has been um, stemming from a couple of challenges that are faced across um, coming from a place whereby you have a desire to learn about research, you have a desire to engage in research. But the challenge is that you, at the very beginning, don't know what research is, you don't know how to conduct research, you don't know where to start from. And so at first, this, for me, I was grappled with a huge sense of anxiety, um, just not knowing what the waters hold and, and, and uh, what lies ahead. And so for me, the first challenge that I had at the very onset was that sense of anxiety, not knowing what lies ahead and, and whether it's a dream that I'll actually get to fulfill or achieve and so on. Um, the other challenge I think for me has been the amount and the significant amount of time and effort that it has taken, um, especially when I'm on session uh, where you now get to have to balance between school and then dedicating time towards um, reviewing an article, reviewing a manuscript and, and performing the usual editorial work and, and also getting to um, um, come up with an idea, collect data and, and the entire process until you get uh, the manuscript published. And, and that goes on to say that, yes, it's to a larger extent been uh, a lengthy process. And so it's called for a lot of patience and which I'd say is one of the upside of uh, the journey that I've had. It's, I think research has taught me a lot of patience, a lot of patience and, and um, just putting a lot of effort into, into the, the, to, to have the quality of work that I'd want to have. I, I think um, the other thing that I'll, I'll, I'll probably mention is that, um, during my first uh, uh, submissions uh, to journals, I received a lot of rejections. Um, I, I, I think 
probably I've had about 20 article rejections so far. And, and I think for me, the one that hit hard or the one that hit home was the first rejection. And, and I was trying to ask myself, it's my first article to get to submit. I mean, it would have been, uh, or rather would have had a huge share of confidence if uh, it would have been directly accepted. But the beauty of it is that um, after every single journal rejection, I'd probably learn something that I'd improve in the next version, the next draft of the manuscript. And so dealing with manuscript or article rejection has been another challenge that I think for me, I have faced over time. And um, uh, the, the most significant one was um, for an article still again during the COVID-19 um, um, output. And we were trying to publish in several journals and we had several rejections. And, and um, I think just trying to compare um, the amount of time and effort you've put into it and, and the outcome being that uh, your manuscript is not directly accepted, I think that that for me um, was quite disappointing at first. But I think when I looked at it from a sense of, I want to learn from these rejections that it being rejected on what basis and what can I learn about it that I can improve in the subsequent manuscripts and this, in the subsequent articles. Then I think finally, um, another challenge that I'd probably echo out is um, imposter syndrome, if I'd call it that way. And now uh, this has been in the sense, um, I've had peers um, and, and, and mentors who have looked up to. And, and sometimes um, having gone through the, the, the training, both individually and corporately, in terms of how to conduct research and how to engage in research. And, and sometimes you, you somewhat feel that there's this huge mountain of knowledge that you're yet to, to still know and understand. And sometimes you just feel like you're not really good enough to actually um, engage in research at a capacity that uh, people expect you to be. And so for me, I'd say these are just some of the few um, challenges that uh, I'd, I'd probably echo out the most significant, I think, for me. And, 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 and I think the animations uh, uh, outlined within the screen just um, echo out some of the challenges that I've been, I've been saying across the, uh, the path towards um, my research journey. And this is just to further on, as I'd said, um, being a medical student and engaging in research, it, it somewhat takes a toll, um, especially because of the time and effort. And so my greatest challenge to date has been finding a way to strike a balance between um, uh, continually keeping tabs with your academics, while at the same time getting to engage in, in conducting research, in reviewing research, and in furthering the research agenda, both in, in medical students and, and in the global perspective as a whole. So you might ask, so Vincent, uh, you've mentioned all these challenges that you face and you've mentioned the, 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 the hard days, the time and effort that you have to put into it. So is it really worth it? And, and of course, uh, without even thinking, my answer would be yes, yes, it is worth it. And, and I wouldn't change any, any path if I were to go back and, and maybe remake the decisions I've made. Um, and I think for me, um, if we look at it from a broader perspective is that we have, medical education and medical practice essentially being built on the bedrock of scientific evidence and this scientific evidence is is what translates towards uh, having the best interventions to to have the best output being the, the the highest level of patient care now i am very passionate about undergraduate medical student engagement in research and and that is so because i i huge I, I strongly believe in, in the place that medical students do play in terms of furthering the research agenda. And, and, and I think when we think about research, it's easy for um, us medical students to think about it from a perspective whereby we think it's, <clears throat> sorry, for the chosen few or for those who've already advanced into clinical practice. But for me, I believe if we have this culture of conducting and performing research and being heavily engaged in research, from a very foundational perspective uh, as a medical student, I believe we'd be able to take um, medical research and medical education and scientific evidence to a much higher level. And, and why that is, it's because um, the physician scientist is quite, is quite um, pivotal in terms of uh, uh, contributing to the development of medicine and all the innovations that surround enhancing uh, our patient care. And so medical students ideally 
do bridge the gap between um, 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 research and, and, and practice. And, and that has to start at a very early and foundational age so that we're not getting to engage in research simply because we need a thesis or a dissertation to be able to graduate from our courses. And so my, my, my belief is that medical research is quite critical and it warrants being introduced at a very early and foundational stage in the undergraduate medical student. Um, and, and, and I know the previous slide has probably talked about why research is important to medical education and, and, and the furtherment of medicine as a whole. But I think um, the other beauty to it is that research, it, it remolds us into better beings, if I'd call it that way. And, and why is that so? And, and if I draw you back to what I mentioned earlier on why, what, what really drew me into research? And I'd say, if we put aside the fact that research is quite critical, and, and, and that's, that's, that's a fact, that it's quite critical in, in furthering medical education, um, the beauty of it that for me was that was more attractive was how um, in those that I looked up to, research had transformed them into these beings who have um, a huge um, understanding and a huge uh, perspective and, and, and their capacity to critically think through circumstances was quite admirable. And so if you think about is it worth, is research worth it for the individual? I'd say yes, because of course, there's the strengthening our critical capacity, increasing our confidence as we engage in conferences, in presentation. It, it, and, and, and again, in, in the era that we're moving into, um, just having a medical degree in, in its own is, is, is not enough, especially in developing countries uh, and in places whereby jobs are a bit um, of, of, of a constraint. And so we need something else that will further um, uh, express our capacity to, to have um, exquisite performance. And of course, with research comes on leadership and, and gives us um, a platform in the center stage to the world whereby you can be able to generate connections. And, and I think the International Journal of Medical Students is a very uh, a, a good example in that, whereby we have an entire editorial team from all corners of the world. And, and we all get to know each other. And, and in that case, I get to be here today and share my journey simply because research has enabled me to have uh, wide networking. And so I think to, to bring it to, uh, to a close really would be to say that yes, uh, engagement and participating in research has its own ups and downs, but I think it's worth it, not just for medical education and medical practice and for best patient care, but also for the individuals. It grows us, it, it enhances our capacity uh, to to have that uh, exquisite performance in in a holistic sense. Now, so that is not just um, theoretical perspectives on why research is worth it. I'd give you a personal uh, perspective on why, for me, research has been worth it. And and as I'd mentioned earlier, research has given me a, a huge um, sense of exposure and center stage to the world, whereby I've been able to be involved in several research consortiums uh, and and. And the best example would be uh, the International Journal of Medical Student Research Working Groups uh, that we've been able to develop as part of the editorial team where we get to, to publish and, 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 and engage with each other in, in conducting um, research on different topics and, and key trending and relevant topics to, to global health. Um, the other organization that I've also been able to work with uh, all the way from uh, Poland is the International Evidence-Based Anatomy Working Group. Um, and, and we've been able to have a couple of systematic reviews and meta-analysis that uh, cover especially um, anatomical topics. Um, I've also, in the recent past, been able to work with the Yonsei University in South Korea Working Group. And here we've been able to do a lot of um, uh, cardiothoracic-related uh, reviews and, and, and uh, topics re regarding the uh, COVID-19 and pneumothorax, and which leads me to probably the next two uh, consortiums that I've worked with. That is the Research in COVID-19 Times Consortium, which I said uh, earlier was very foundational in terms of my growth in research. And uh, most, most recently, the International Pneumothorax Working Group uh, that is primarily based again in South Korea. 
Now, besides the exposure in terms of uh, these working groups, I've been able to also uh, participate and engage and conduct conferences. Uh, for example, I recently received an, a travel award to present my research in um, Philadelphia at the American Association for Anatomy uh, Conference. Um, I've also had a chance to present my, uh, my research in, um, in the International Peer Review Congress and also uh, uh, local uh, conferences in Kenya uh, organized by the Surgical Society of Kenya and also um, the African Regional University Alliances on Non-Communicable Diseases uh, Center of Excellence here in, uh, in, in Kenya as well. Um, besides the consortiums and the conferences, I've also been able to participate in uh, writing and also have received a couple of grants. And just to mention a few, um, the American Association for Anatomy uh, uh, Travel Grant, the International Brain Research Organization um, uh, uh, Grant to also attend and participate in a, in a, in a training, in a one-week training in Egypt on neurodegenerative diseases from a, a multidisciplinary perspective. Then also there's a grant that we re recently received on um, still from the same organization, the Brain Awareness Week grant. And so I mentioned all this just to showcase uh, uh, a snapshot really of how much significant research has been for me. And I'd say if I'd summarize it in, in one word, what research has done for me, it's given me exposure. And with that exposure, I've gotten to reap so much from it. And this is just to mention a few. And so when we think about research, um, my hope is that uh, to this point in our, in our conversation or discussion today is that we've been able to understand um, the essence of, of conducting research. And especially for me, I echo this out to all the undergraduate medical students across the world. And, and research is quite critical and key to our journey uh, moving forward. And so, um, as you've realized, I've echoed in, in, in so many words and, and phrases about um, medical student engagement in research, undergraduate medical students particularly. And um, it, it begs the question, so what's the current state of affairs with regards to these matters? And uh, this is a study that was conducted among uh, three Arab universities that was looking at the knowledge, attitudes, as well as the barriers uh, to participation of uh, medical student in research. And um, these are a couple of questions that are trying to assess the knowledge, the willingness, and also some of the barriers that medical students do perceive as a, a, a limitation to them in terms of conducting research. And I think um, of the eight questions that were within this questionnaire, I'd like us to focus on number four and number seven. Number four states, undergraduate students should participate in research. And what we see is that a large proportion, uh, about 76% uh, did respond yes. So medical students do believe that they should engage in research. In number seven, we also see that they do have the willingness to engage in research, or at least a majority of them, about 70% as well. But then when you look at the other uh, questions, that is uh, one to three, and, and, and the other ones apart from number four and seven, what we clearly see is that while the desire to participate in research is there, the willingness is there, there are so many barriers that prevent the undergraduate medical student from getting to actually learn how to conduct research and end up performing research. And so um, it's quite a sad state of affairs, if you'd ask me. And, and I think um, changing this narrative and changing this trajectory is entirely up to you and me um, today. And, and each of us really has a role in this. And, 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 and my hope and my prayer is that we can get to uh, um, provide more opportunities for undergraduate medical students to learn how to do research uh, through the different research clubs, through um, journals like the International Journal of Medical Students. And so this leads me to the next thing. And so how then do we change this narrative? Because we're, we're saying research is important, especially introduced at a very foundational age. And so how do we get to, to change this narrative? What's, what's your place? What's my place in changing this narrative? And so there are several research opportunities available for the undergraduate medical student. And I've just highlighted a few that uh, we probably have interacted with one or all of this. 
And the first one is um, we have several organizations. Of course, all medical students are affiliated to the International Federation of Medical Student Associations, uh, within which we now have different bodies. For example, uh, being an African student or a student studying in Africa, I fall under the Federation of African Medical Student Association. And all these associations do have bodies that are uh, purely um, committed towards research. And one of them is uh, the Standing Committee on Publication or the Standing Committee on Medical Research, abbreviated as COPA, Benscoma. And I'm sure we have um, representatives of this in the different associations that we are all affiliated to. Then we also have some online platforms where we can get to individually uh, undertake courses in research. Uh, for example, I'm sure we've all seen or heard about uh, Coursera or done a few courses. Uh, there's also Web of Science and, and Cochrane, just to mention a few. Um, we also have in some faculties or facilities intercalated courses. Uh, an example is what I undertook. Uh, for example, the Bachelor of Science intercalated course in anatomy, which apart from um, uh, enriching your knowledge in anatomy and in the pedagogy of anatomy, it also uh, seeks to enrich your capacity in research. Then we also have research clubs across um, uh, different uh, facilities, different faculties, and uh, we also have opportunities where medical students can engage in uh, assisting in data collection as research assistant uh, during their electives. And, and, and of course, um, again, why we are here today, uh, journals such as the International Journal of Medical Students, uh, the Annals of African Surgery Internship Programs, and also um, the Journal of African uh, Medical Students, and all these journals which are purely uh, centric or centered towards um, enhancing medical student engagement in research. And so I put this here today to just challenge us that um, I believe we all have the desire, the willingness, and the capacity to actually perform research. And, and my hope is that we may not hold back because we don't know where to start from. These are just to mention, but a few of the places we can all plug in. Now, to bring this to a close, um, you might ask, so I've shared on my journey, the past, where I am today. I've shared on the challenges that I've gone through. And we've asked ourselves the question, is it really worth it? And we've answered that both from an individual perspective and from a, a global or societal perspective. We've also gone into uh, just discussing the state of affairs of medical students and the role that each of us uh, uh, has to play in terms of um, uh, changing the trajectory of this uh, uh, um, journey. And so you might ask, so, so what, what does the future hold, uh, both for me in terms of my uh, engagement in research and in undergraduate medical research as, as well? I think um, to start with the latter is um, I believe that if I look at it from maybe a five-year perspective, um, we're going to have more students who are engaged and plugged into research. And, and this is as a fruit of the different factions that I mentioned before that are, um, are very keen on having workshops, having trainings, and also facilitating the different levels of um, uh, the, 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 the furtherment or the progression of medical student engagement in research. So um, if you'd ask me, I'd say the future is really bright. And um, um, I think the, the, the next generation medical students um, will be more equipped in research. And, and my hope is that this can be an agenda that is spearheaded both at an individual perspective, but also from an institutional basis so that uh, we have policies being made, we have uh, um, um, programs being curated and actually inculcated into um, the learning of medicine. On a personal perspective, my hope is that in the next five years, as I hope to uh, finalize on my medical uh, studies and, and, and maybe pursue my um, uh, fellowship or residency and, and master's program, my hope is that I may be able to now transition into performing active clinical research, uh, being engaged in uh, clinical trials and such. Um, my hope is that I can also be able to enhance collaborations, not just so that I can be able to plug into more consortiums, but also form consortiums and, and organizations that can um, help plug in more medical students into uh, performing research and, 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 and to that end partner with journals, partner with organizations. Um, I'd hope to also engage more in transnational research whereby we are not just conducting research for the sake of 
a H index or an I10 index, or for the sake of enhancing our CVs, uh, or just for the sake of conducting research. But we are conducting research with with the hope and um, with the goal to towards uh, policy change, really. And 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 I'm quite intent on um, seeing research transition into policy development that will then move on to transform uh, or enhance global health. And then finally, I'd, I'd hope that um, as I move forward and, and maybe grow up and mature in research, that I can be able to plug into more editorial work uh, through different journals and, and in different engagements. And that's, that's my uh, snapshot of what I believe the future holds. The parting shot here, um, again, uh, this is mainly tailored towards um, medical students. Um, um, I'm quite biased towards that. Um, and and, and um, the animations here just uh, depict, uh, uh, I'd say, three things. The first animation to our top right um, just um, talks about the decline in terms of our ambition as we grow um, older, if I'd, if I'd call it that way, really. And um, my hope is that while we are still young, I know young is relative, but yeah, while we are still young, if we can get to to harness that and get to 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 um, engage more with research and 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 um, utilize the energies that we have um, right now, as we see um, for a first year medical student, um, one probably be interested in winning a Nobel Prize and, and coming up with uh, something really um, uh, mind blowing. And then as the trajectory moves on towards fifth year, we can see from uh, from the, um, uh, uh, the graph illustrated there, um, one is just interested in attending a conference. And so before our ambition begins fading away, let's channel onto that and and and, and bank on that to, to enhance our capacity in research. But also, why do I think it's important to engage in research as an undergraduate medical student? Um, the animation below, um, talks about how as we grow older, our intellectual freedom becomes more limited. Um, I'd talk about it in this way. Um, while we are still conducting research, not necessarily because we want to uh, um, fulfill the requirements for a particular program, uh, whether it's our master's program or our fellowship program, we can get to wander around and conduct research in all areas be it surgical areas, uh, uh, internal medicine, or obstetrics and gynecology, or even public health um, 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 re research fields. And so this will also help us in terms of just getting our grounding and getting to see where do our passions lie. And so while we are still young, while we, we're still conducting research for the love of research and, and, and for, the, for the desire to grow in research, we have more intellectual freedom as compared to as we move forward. And, and, and finally, um, the two individuals uh, who are rubbing sticks together for fun and um, they discovered fire. And that's, that's as easy as research is. And so my hope is that we can get to demystify the complexity of research in undergraduate medical students and in, and in medical practitioners as a whole and, and get to, uh, to promote the research agenda by simplifying and enhancing the understanding of all um, um, relevant parties, yeah. And so that brings me to the close of um, this uh, brief narrative. And my hope is that um, we've been able to grab uh, a few things here and there and that we shall be able to plug in and partner together in enhancing uh, medical research. And um, thank you so much. Back to you, um, Leah. Great, thank you so much for your presentation, Vincent. Um, it was fantastic. I really appreciate the honesty and vulnerability of your presentation. And I think a lot of you know current medical students and future medical students will really resonate with that. And um, also the all the different animations really added a, a fun touch to a very important topic. So thank you so much. Um, so I just have a few questions actually that sort of arose from from this talk. And I really liked at the beginning, you had mentioned that research, research had like transformed a mindset. And I, I was curious, um, what was that sort of transformation for you and what kind of inspired you to go into, into research? Um, interesting question. Um, probably I'll answer it from a broad perspective, whereby um, getting to uh, join medical school and, and interact with um, some of my mentors 
and just seeing how um, their mindset and in terms of how they'd approach problems and come up with solutions and how they'd um, even reason out simple logical concepts. Uh, for me, that, that was quite attractive, just seeing how um, research can build that sense of critical mindset that goes beyond um, applying it in answering a research question. And, and just seeing how research can be relevant even in social contexts, even in, 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 in solving simple problems in a social context. Yeah. So I think for me, the fact that research was able to um, demonstrate its capacity and its power to, to, to apply that critical uh, problem solving skills uh, beyond the limits of, of um, uh, answering a research question and, and having a, a research output. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So like, it sounds like, again, like there's obviously the research component, but there's so many other skills that you learn um, throughout that process that can be applicable to like other areas of your life. And so how would you say that, you know, your involvement in research has helped you grow as a medical student? I think um, the beauty of research, I think that I've, I've, I've seen on my end is that um, it's called me to um, a better understanding of medical concepts. And, and, and I've had moments whereby I've, uh, at a very tender age, have had to uh, draft systematic reviews on topics that uh, I probably haven't gone through uh, within my medical school um, journey. And so it's called me to have a deeper understanding and, 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 and um, being able to cross-link different concepts together. And so um, first, it's helped me in terms of uh, enhancing my understanding of medicine as a whole. And so that, that has really given in to a lot of um, my success, even on the academia perspective. Yeah. And then um, secondly, um, I think looking at it, not just from um, enhancing my skill or rather my um, academia, um, research has taught me a lot about leadership, um, both directly and indirectly, um, because um, in, in the different consortiums that um, uh, I've been able to partner with, we've been able to do a lot of group work and that has taught me a lot of um, teamwork and team dynamics really, yeah. So um, I think what, what I'd say is it's grown me as a medical student in terms of learning how to communicate, um, both um, in terms of presenting and also in terms of um, having any literal work that uh, I need to present, uh, be it reports or, or or even something as simple as just communicating to a senior lecturer through a message or even on a phone call. So it's taught me a lot about um, uh, the confidence and, and learning how to express myself both verbally and in text and also enhancing my academia and, and some of my leadership skills that I've been able to also harness and give back to, to, to my fellow medical students. That's fantastic. And again, like that communication skill is so, so important, not only as medical students, but again, like throughout your medical career. And you bring up this really important um, concept of like leadership. And I was going to ask, because you've been involved in a lot of different collaborations. Um, do you have any advice for working in teams? Um, of course, anytime we have um, more than one individual coming um, together, uh, we always have talk about team dynamics, yeah. Um, especially because we're all coming from different cultural context, we have different personalities, and and uh, our, our theories and our beliefs of thought and are, are all quite different. And I think um, what I'd say is that, um, and, and maybe I'd, I'd probably tailor this to the whole discussion of um, uh, team dynamics, especially in the context of research and uh, the question on authorship, for instance. I mean, we've had a lot of stories of how um, uh, senior um, uh, uh, members of a particular team would end up probably uh, not contributing much and, and, and the individuals who contribute much end up becoming uh, um, maybe not an author or just falling into the acknowledgements. We've heard about those tragic stories. And I think for me, what I'd say is that um, there's a lot of team dynamics that is called upon when we are, uh, um, are going to perform research, especially in a team setup. And, and, and I think for me, I'd admit there's no particular um, manuscript or paper that I've been able to do alone. So um, it, it's taught me a lot about how to interact with individuals and how to 
um, consider each and everyone's thoughts and, and ideas and incorporate them into the entire model, whereby we are not um, ignoring people's perspectives simply because we don't understand them, but also viewing everyone's opinion and suggestions and ideas uh, in view of uh, their cultural and and and, um, and and their backgrounds, ideally, yeah. So I'd say there's a lot of teamwork that is called upon, um, and and somehow the more you'd get engaged in research, uh, which will pull you into more of uh, 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 group um, contributions, the more you get to also grow in terms of your skills in terms of team dynamics. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And you had also mentioned um, like a very important topic about like barriers that medical students are facing in terms of getting into academia, starting research. And do you have any advice for medical students who might be experiencing any of these sorts of barriers? Um, I'd like to think of my story as a success story and a success story that further sediments the fact that it it's actually is possible to overcome these barriers. And, and I speak uh, uh, from a, a setting whereby um, these barriers were present. And even as I was talking about my research journey, I talked about how there's a point whereby I didn't know what, what research really is. And then anxiety that's surrounding the, 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 um, um, the, the season and, and getting to uh, uh, and have these challenges about uh, not understanding concepts, even as you get to learn learn research, and so my my advice probably would be that first, uh, just a simple belief in the fact that it actually is possible to overcome these barriers, or even more beyond overcoming them, coming up with solutions to actually uh, 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 cater for these barriers. And as I said earlier, it's it's a corporate uh, responsibility whereby you and I and each of us has a role to play in that. And so what I'd say is um, <clears throat> having believed that it actually is possible, um, there are those platforms that I mentioned earlier, just start. And and you're going to experience a, a couple of challenges here and there, but it shouldn't be a, a, um, a reason to quit, a reason to give up. And, and the beauty of this is that we have a lot of um, individuals and societies and the IJMS being one of them that is are purely committed towards enhancing uh, medical uh, engagement in research. And so there's, a, there's an entire team that is committed towards um, providing advice, providing resources, and, and holding the hands of medical students really in, in, in walking through this journey. So I'd say the, the barriers and the challenges are there. And even as we look at the projection for what the future holds, they will still be there. But my hope is that we can be able to overcome them and find solutions to these barriers so that we can all uh, get to engage in research collectively. Uh, because I believe research is not um, uh, for the select few. It's, it's, it's one thing that all of us should plug in. It's, it's a lifestyle, if I'd call it that way, yeah. Certainly. And, you know, I think you had mentioned too, um, like that importance of having like a really good support network. And for you, it's like your family and your school and all these different associations. So really, really leaning on some others for that support, especially when things aren't maybe going your way um, yeah. and looking for some, some advice and some mentorship. Yeah. And yeah. so I know you had mentioned that you're, you know, you're hoping to continue your research career Um well beyond uh, medical medical school. And how, how do you envision that might change um, as a physician versus doing research as a medical student? Um, interesting question, Leah. Um, my When I think about what my future holds, um, I'd like to probably engage uh, in, in three different perspectives in terms of uh, career growth at first. Um, uh, hopefully get to uh, teach I, I, I enjoy teaching. I love teaching a lot. And so my hope is getting to uh, engage in teaching, um, particularly anatomy, um, getting to participate in clinical work. And, and um, I, I, I know specialties change based on one's individual experience. So in this season that I'm in, um, I'm quite interested in cardiothoracic surgery. And, and so um, if that remains constant, I'd hope to uh, uh, progress into uh, cardiothoracic surgery as a consultant. And um, thirdly, I'd like to engage a lot in, in terms of health administration and leadership. And uh, to now tie that to the question that you've asked me is, um, I want, as I said, for me, research is a lifestyle. It, it's, it's something I want to 
uh, have it so inculcated in me that I get to apply these skills in day-to-day -day, uh, life and finding solutions. And so to that end, I'd, I'd like to uh, be at a point whereby in the next five years or so, uh, uh, maybe transform into engaging in research in these three key areas, whereby I'm uh, conducting research to uh, enhance uh, medical education as, as a teacher of anatomy probably, and, and, and looking at medical education, not just within the bounds of anatomy, but it as a whole, how to improve and how to find some solutions to these barriers and, and hopefully get to um, also enhance the, 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 um, the amount of time and the amount of programs that are in medical school um, that get to teach and empower students in research. Um, on the other bit, uh, getting to, as they interact with patients, as I said earlier, um, research is worth it because it, it's the bedrock on, on which best medical uh, practice and best patient care is, is built upon. And so as they interact with patients, getting to see um, the, the different challenges that uh, do exist and the different conundrums in, in, in clinical practice and getting now to um, merge that with research. And as I said earlier, I hope to uh, be involved in clinical trials and such. And, and now tying it with the administration, uh, the health administration bit is where the translational research comes in, where from the findings that you've found in the different research that you've had, getting to spearhead these findings into uh, a translation into policy development. Yeah. So my hope is that I can get to engage in research both from conducting research, empowering uh, a medical student to engage more in research, and also translating these research findings into policies that will then um, 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 enhance patient care and also enhance the, the, the state of global health. Amazing. And I, I can't wait to see where your career takes you, Vincent. You have you. many great ideas and I, I have a feeling you're going to be a wonderful teacher as well. Um, thank you. <laughs> so I want to thank you again uh, for, you know, taking the time to share with us your research experiences, your perspectives, um, the advice that you have for, for other medical students out there. Um, I'd also like to thank our audience again for, for tuning in and uh, hope to see you all at our next episode where we continue to learn about the research careers of other clinician scientists across the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.